The scripture lesson today is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched by him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be able to tell from the front of your bulletin, but we're beginning a new worship series this week. From now until uh, Transfiguration Sunday, which is sort of the end of the season after Epiphany um, and the marker between that season and the start of Lent, we'll be studying the book of 1 Corinthians. And our theme is Somos del Señor, and that's Spanish, and it doesn't translate exactly, because if you translate it exactly, it's just... Um, we are of the gentleman or of the Lord, and actually it's we belong to Christ. 
in its, its sort of full idiomatic meaning. So our, th our series as we look at 1 Corinthians is we belong to Christ. And we're going to be talking in particular um, about uh, how we belong to Christ is our unifying, uh, it, it's what unifies us in the midst of our diversity, not because it takes away our diversity, but it allows us to bring our diversity together as a strength. Uh, I just finished uh, this week. I got to go to Lincoln for something called um, Clergy Orders and Fellowship. It is a time when the bishop um, encourages slash mandates that all of the clergy of the conference who are at least three-quarter time uh, come together for some time of continuing education, for worship together, uh, for taking care of some of the business of the orders of elder and deacon and the association of local pastors, um, but also... Um, they get to sort of decide what the continuing education is. And, and this year, they invited uh, a clergy person from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, his name is Reverend Mike Mather, and he had been a speaker at annual conference. And when he was done, enough of us said, uh, we want to hear more about that, that they invited him back uh, to do our, our session for clergy orders and fellowship. He serves at Broadway United Methodist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. And they have a tradition in their worship service, in which after the scriptures have been read, then they have what they call lessons from the contemporary church. And he'll talk a little bit more uh, in the introduction about what that is. But in this particular one, which was just last week, he invited a, a number of um, individuals from within the congregation to share where they're from, the parts of their identity that have been formative and made them who they are. And so you'll get an opportunity to listen to that and to listen to the breadth of diversity uh, that they each bring to that task of talking about who they are and where they're from. And as you do, I invite you to follow. It's likely that as you listen, a part of you will begin to think, how would I do this? Um, so let me encourage you to listen to that little voice in you. And if you want to make notes in your bulletin or something, that's fine to get started, but it's going to be your homework. Uh, is, is that I'm going to challenge you uh, to write where you're from in, in the same kind of vein so that we can bring it back together and talk about um, how we are united in Christ. Would you play that audio for us, Russ? I want to invite the people to come forward now who I've invited to share a little bit during the lesson from the Contemporary Church. So all you who, yes, Dwayne, you're part of this. Every Sunday... We pause and have this moment we call the lesson from the contemporary church. It's a moment when we remind ourselves that God didn't stop speaking when the book went to press, but continues to write in our lives and stories. Come on up behind me here. This morning, I've invited several folks from the congregation to answer the question, where am I from? In a few words, with very different experiences in life, they remind us that we are one. In our difference, in all our beauty, we are one. Dwayne's going to go first. I am from heartache and hope, from windswept ship decks that scan distant horizons for new beginnings. I am from hot, tangled jungles and a narrow swath of land ripped open by human hands. From that watery scar between two oceans dug shovelful by shovelful by the sweat-covered backs of brown, black, and yellow men. I am from Carnival in the streets. I am from fiestas in the barrio. I am from arroz con coco, gallina guisada, ropa vieja. From ajo, tomate, cebollo, pimiento, asciotto, sazon. I am from sailors and sweethearts, from rough hands and hard work from wise words and bedtime prayers. And daily? Mid-century modern. I am from my mother's intuition, constant, vigilant, and my father's wit, silent, dry. I am from plaid pleated skirts and rosaries and white candles and fish sticks on Friday. <laughs> I am from suburbs without sidewalks, and swimming lessons and story hour at the public library. I am from homework and the honor roll and perfect attendance. I am from compliance and defiance. I am coiled kitten energy and detached feline disdain. 
Chris Johnston. I am castles and kilts, the highland fling, a monster named Nessie. I am cowboys and rodeos, square dancing, wide open prairies. I am a mile high and a bronco for life, a golden brewery, a rocky college town. I am bay shrimp and a golden bridge, hippies on every corner, techies to the south of me. I am potatoes and international borders, home to the bald eagle migration, logs running the river. I am round ball and race cars. Colts grow to be Broncos. Weather is unpredictable. I am proud and thankful. My ancestry, my experiences have made me who I am, who you see. Brand Quigley. I am from a home filled with 11 people, <laughs> and not filled with quite enough money to cover us. I am from Catholic parishes and schools with nuns and dusty dogma but also strong community. I am from afternoons with stacks of books and sports magazines and mornings spent running around with my brothers in circles, chasing glory, but not quite catching it. I'm from a people who dive into their work, especially if it involves a righteous fight. I'm from religious socialism, but we never called it by that name. Waddell Hamer. I am from sun, summer afternoons on my dad's lap watching Harry Carey call baseball games. I am from backyard cookouts with old folks listening to old tunes and kids jamming to the new tunes all the same. I am from the region where the realities of being, a black, and, being black and poor are greeted with ghetto birds and cherry berry lights. I am a black man who was taught to be as black as the boldness of light of night. I am a 15-year-old kid who in the span of a year lost his whole world. I am a young man who regained the world thanks to the love of others. I am full of con as many contradictions and complexities as hip hop. I am human. Sandia Gray. I am from sugar cane, from my mother's land of young. Fresh, fresh scents of sage and masala chai. I am the fine threads of Indian saris washed in rivers where local gossip was exchanged. I am of parents daring to uproot the scenery, shake the status quo. I am the pearl in an oyster imperfectly round, yet smooth like fine bourbon. I'm part of a village, a loving family, created by using my body as a pin cushion and willing to do it all again. I am part of the sadness in my father's eyes, his worst diagnosis. I am light and fire, some love, some hate yet always loyal. I am strength. I am peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God indeed. That's now the fourth or fifth time I've listened to it because I heard it at orders and fellowship and decided to use it and listen to it again and then I listened to it in first service. And every time I'm struck by new things and I'm, I'm struck by the reactions of the folks around me, the things that made you sort of giggle in your pew with recognition, and the things that are deeply unfamiliar, the parts that uh, don't resemble anything that you know but you can almost picture it because of the way that it's retold as a part of uh, someone's heart. I also have to say, uh, when we listened to this at Clergy Orders and Fellowship, I could not hear the bass line happening underneath this. Talk about somebody's gift for the church, right, to, to uh, sort of do that jazz orchestration underneath um, people's stories. But it's fitting, I think, to think about such a wide diversity gathered in the church together as we begin to look at the book of 1 Corinthians in part because 
Paul writes his letter to the, to the church in Corinth, um, not in a vacuum, but in response to reports. And those reports, unfortunately, are not, yeah, this is going great. Everything is going the way you want it to. It's just like when you left, we're good. Instead, the reports are, well, see, some things have happened. And now we have some situations. The church at Corinth was divided. They were doing some things that Paul had not taught them to do. Uh, for one thing, when they gathered for what we would call communion, and you have to understand that when they gathered for communion, they were not gathering for uh, a, a piece of bread, even as big as I tear the, the bread. Um, but they were not gathering for a piece of bread and a, and a little bitty, um, not even half shot of grape juice. But instead, they were gathering for, for a potluck, right, where they would gather together for a feast, uh, where they brought the food and they, and they ate together. And then at the end, they would recount the story and, and take of the bread and the wine. But something was happening. It had, it had gone wrong. Uh, the community at Corinth had begun um, a bad pattern in which the folks who were wealthy and did not have to labor every day to make their living, you know, they didn't have a lot on their calendars, and so they would gather early and start the feast. And so they would be partway through their meal before those who were working with their hands to survive could finish their labor and get to church. And so by the time the folks who were laborers would show up, they were sort of, you know, getting whatever crusty bits were in the corner of the pan and the, the bottom of the crock pot. They were not sharing together in equality. And not only that, uh, the folks in Corinth had begun to sort of divide people up based on what spiritual gifts they had um, with, a, with a strong hierarchy so that certain gifts were more honored and given more say in what happened and given more power and authority than other gifts. And so Paul writes a letter of redirection. You know, the way we do with our kids when they've got an idea and it's not the idea we'd like them to pursue. And so we, we try to bring them back around to make positive choices. Paul's writing to bring the church at Corinth back around to positive choices. And what a beautiful thing that instead of launching right into what's going wrong in Corinth, Paul begins with greetings of peace and grace and mercy and with thanksgiving. Paul does not just give thanks that those people exist, but he gives some pretty specific thanks, right? He, he gives thanks to Jesus. I give thanks to Christ for the strengths that Christ has given you. You see? Do you see what Paul is doing ever so subtly? I give thanks that you have been strengthened by God in knowledge and speech and the various gifts of the Spirit. He's reminding the people at Corinth that their gifts are not their achievements and their accomplishments, but are a gift offered in grace and mercy by God. And, and, he reminds the people gathered in Corinth that their gifts are not given to them for their own benefit, You have been strengthened so that you, that's a plural, so that you are not lacking anything. You see, part of the grace and the mercy of the gifts that we receive from God are not only how those gifts help us, but the way in which when we begin to put them together, the gifts that God has given to each of us means that we 
as a body of Christ, as a community gathered in worship, in service, in praise, in outreach to our community, that we are not lacking. Now, I told you that Mike was our keynote speaker at Orders and Fellowship and that he had spoken to us at annual conference, but I didn't tell you what he came to speak to us about. He came to speak to us about the driving philosophy that uh, shapes all of the ministry of Broadway United Methodist Church, where he serves, and a number of other churches in Indiana, and a number of other uh, churches and ministries and missions uh, throughout the connection. And this is, we call it ABCD, Asset-Based Community Development. And it's not a program, right? It's not a a, a 10-step, do these things, and it fixes everything. But instead, it's a philosophy of ministry. And it holds, and this is incredibly scriptural, it holds that we are all gifted. We all have gifts and resources to offer to the body of Christ. And so what asset-based community development does is says that we're going to do away with the old model of mission and ministry and, and social outreach that had to do with Dividing the world into two parts, some folks who've got something to give and some folks who need to receive something. In fact, all week long, every time we heard the word need or needy, we were asked to boo as a way of helping to break that mindset. Yeah, boo. Can you do that? Say boo. We were booing when we heard the words need and needy because asset-based community development holds that none of us are needy All of us are human, and therefore all of us have gifts and resources, and all of us have problems and dependencies and places where we can use community and support. And so asset-based community development is geared around connecting folks with the right resources with the folks in the need of that particular kind of support in order to be able to leverage their resources, not only for their own well-being, but for the well-being of another, so that we become a web and a network of resources holding one another up. Now, if that's not fitting for Human Relations Sunday and the Sunday before Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I don't know what is. Because part of what we remember as we read the scripture in 1 Corinthians, as, he th- uh, as Paul gives thanks to God for the ways in which we have been strengthened by God for the good of the whole, is that we, whether we like it or not, we depend on one another. Each of us needs the gifts and resources that our brothers and sisters bring to the body of Christ. And each of us has gifts and resources that are needed so that the body of Christ will not be lacking. Paul also says that God will continue, that God will continue to strengthen us so that we will not be found lacking on the day of judgment. In Wesleyan terms, we have another name for that. We call it sanctifying grace. It means God's not done with us yet. That God is always at work in us, is always using others around us and the uh, situations that we encounter in order to make us more and more into the image of God into the likeness of Christ so that we are always moving, as John Wesley would say, onward in perfection or completion sometimes is a translation that we're more comfortable with. This is cause for celebration. My hope is that as you take on that challenge to write a few lines about where you are from, that perhaps 
your heart will follow that up with a contemplation of the gifts that you bring, what it is that you offer so that we are not lacking, so that through us, as a body of Christ together in all our diversity, we can bear good news to the community in which we have been planted and give thanks to God. Amen.